Hello everyone. Our lesson this week teaches us about, yes, the announcement of Jesus' birth to Mary, but we will also see something else taught in our lesson this week. We will learn this week to, again, trust in the Lord. We will learn to grow to accept his works. Even when something seems impossible to us, we must learn that God does the impossible on a regular basis. There is no such thing as impossible to God. All right, so our lesson, it opens up with Gabriel being sent by God to Nazareth, the city of Galilee, to speak to a virgin that we are told was betrothed with Joseph. That means that she was engaged to Joseph, who scripture plainly mentions to us was of the house of David. Joseph was of the house of David. So there are a couple of things here. There's actually quite a bit here for us to discuss about these two verses. The first thing that we can point out here about these two verses is that Gabriel's announcement to Mary, it is taking place six months after his visit with Zacharias, where he announced the conception of John the Baptist. This is something that uh, we spoke about, we learned about in the first lesson of this quarter. So be sure if you have not already watched that video, be sure to go back and look at the first video of the winter quarter. The second thing that we can point out here about these two verses here is that the mention of Joseph here is for a couple of reasons. The first reason that Joseph is mentioned here is to point out that this was the same Joseph that received a visit from an angel. That angel was highly likely Gabriel. He received a visit from Gabriel in a dream where Gabriel told him about Mary's pregnancy with Christ. We'll see it here in the first chapter of Matthew's gospel. Though by the order of the books of the Bible, we read this announcement first in scripture. The announcement to Joseph came after Mary's announcement. Mary was already showing with the child. That's why Joseph wanted to put her away privately. But the second reason why Joseph is mentioned here is for the fact that he was of the house of David. As we have already seen from our lesson last week, the Messiah was promised by God to come through the seed of David. So by the marriage of Joseph and Mary, Christ could lay claim to the throne of David and he could also say that he was the Messiah because again, that fit the prophecy of what was prophesied about the Messiah, but it also followed the regulation that was put in place by God that the king had to come through the seed of David. Now, this is something that I'm actually going to speak more on in our Sunday school lesson next week. It plays a very important role in our Sunday school lesson next week. Now, the third point that we can highlight here from these two opening verses of our Sunday school lesson this week is the fact that scripture makes mention of Mary being a virgin, and this was done purposefully. Now, why was it done purposely? Well, Mary being a virgin, it fulfilled the prophecy of the virgin giving birth to the Messiah as the prophecy is stated in the book of Isaiah. The prophecy stated in the book of Isaiah, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Again, it said the virgin. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. In his gospel, Matthew pointed out that all of this, the birth of Christ as it is recorded in the gospels, all of it was done so that prophecy could be fulfilled. We are even told that the name Emmanuel means God with us. Yes, God was certainly with Mary, God was certainly with Joseph, and God, I want you to know, was certainly with the rest of the world to give the world his only begotten son. All right, so we are then told that Mary was a highly favored one who was blessed among women. Mary was blessed and highly favored is what we would say. Now, what was so special about Mary? Was it the fact that she was a virgin? Nah, it wasn't the fact that she was a virgin. She was most likely not the only virgin living in the land at that time. So I think the fact that Mary was blessed and highly favored, I believe that it speaks to the kind of person that she was. You see, we are blessed and highly favored today when we walk and live in fellowship with the Lord. Christ explained to the believer that whatever we ask in his name, the Lord will do for us because we are of genuine faith and because we live and we walk in fellowship with the Lord. So 
I believe that Mary was a woman of faith, and I believe that she walked in fellowship with the Lord. This is what set her apart from others. Now, I believe her walk of faith and her fellowship with the Lord, I believe that it is more confirmed for us, as we see here in the next couple of verses. When Gabriel tells Mary not to be startled by his appearance because she had found again favor with God. Listen, you only find favor with God through the kind of heart that resides within you. In order for us to be a vessel for the Lord, in order for the Lord to use us, we have to be sanctified and we have to walk according to his instructions. This is something that Paul explained to Timothy in his second letter to Timothy. In his second letter to Timothy, Paul said that if anyone cleanses himself spiritually, they will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. I believe that Mary was prepared for this work that the Lord had set aside for her. So, We'll see that after telling her she was blessed and highly favored, Gabriel begins to announce the conception of Christ within her womb. His name, Gabriel said, was to be called Jesus. Now, this is the same name that Gabriel tells Joseph the baby would be called later when it was made known to Joseph that Mary was carrying the Messiah. Now, as Gabriel had did with Zacharias, he went on to explain to Mary how wonderful of a child that she was carrying. Gabriel tells her that the one she would carry in her womb would be great. It would be called the son of the highest, and he would be given the throne of David. Gabriel tells her that the child she was carrying would reign over the house of Jacob, that is Israel, and that he would reign forever, and that there would be no end to his kingdom. His kingdom would be an everlasting kingdom. Gabriel's announcement again, it fulfilled a very well-known prophecy that is found again in the book of Isaiah. It was prophesied in the book of Isaiah that a son would be given and the government would rest upon his shoulder. His name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I tell you, I can't imagine, I cannot imagine what Mary must have been thinking after hearing all of this. Mary asked, well, how can this be, since I do not know a man? Now, do we think that she was doubting as we saw Zacharias had doubted in the first lesson we had this quarter? I would say no. I believe that Mary just needed a bit of clarity because Mary knew how one could get pregnant, and she knew that she had not been with a man. So all of this information that Gabriel was saying to her, it was coming out of left field for Mary. So Mary just needed a bit of clarity. She, again, truly was a virgin. Zacharias, on the other hand, from the first lesson we had this quarter, he felt that he and his wife were simply incapable of having children because of the fact that Elizabeth was barren and because of their age as well. So how can this be? And I believe that this next verse that we're taking a look at now, this verse to me, it is one of the most overlooked verses in the Bible. Many people ask, well, how could Mary be pregnant with a child if she truly was a virgin? She must have had sexual intercourse. That's what a lot of people say. Now, the answer I want you to understand is not hidden from us. God does not hide the answer from us. Gabriel tells us very plainly here that she would conceive a child through the work of God, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we are told, overshadowed her. It came upon her and it moved within her and she conceived within her womb the one to be called the Son of God. God doesn't hide this information from us. As we will see Gabriel say a couple of verses later, there is nothing impossible for the Lord. We know that there is nothing that is impossible for the Lord. As Gabriel does here, he points out that Elizabeth, a relative of Mary, her cousin, a distant cousin, as a sign that God could do what we may believe to be impossible, he points to Elizabeth. Let us remember from our very first lesson this quarter that Elizabeth, again, was considered to be barren. 
But not only was she believed to be barren, her and Zacharias were quote unquote well advanced in years. It was thought to be impossible for them to have children, but God certainly showed that there is no such thing as impossible when it comes to him. Let us remember that God is omnipotent. God is almighty. That means that he is all powerful and he can do whatever he desires to do. So did Mary doubt what the Lord could do? Absolutely not. We'll see here. She said that she was ready to serve the Lord. Mary said, I am ready. As I said, Mary, I truly believe, was a woman of faith from the very beginning. I believe that Mary walked in fellowship with the Lord. I tell you today that this is how we ought to be as believers. We should be ready to serve the Lord. We must be of faith. Again, our lesson Today, it teaches us about, yes, the announcement of Mary's conception with Christ. But again, we learn something else here. We also learn that there is nothing that is impossible for God. And we learn again that we must trust him. We must trust that God is always at work doing the impossible for us. Even when we may have doubt in our heart, God is still at work still working and still doing the impossible for us. So rather than doubting the Lord, we should move in confidence. We should be confident in his power. We should be confident in his work. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. I certainly hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you share this lesson with someone somewhere. And I hope that you will come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. Our lesson next week is our Christmas Sunday school lesson. So certainly be sure to come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. Now, if you want to go into more depth about this lesson, be sure to head over to newfoundfaith.org to where you could read the full commentary of this week's Sunday school lesson. You can also listen to a full audio commentary of this Sunday school lesson there as well at Newfound Faith. Again, newfoundfaith.org. So certainly be sure to do that. Until next time, again, I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers, and I'll pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.